Our next big topic is uh, predator versus prey dynamical systems. So the classic example is up in Canada. Um, they have a lot of data on how many uh, lynxes there are. A lynx is like a large bobcat. And how many snowshoe hares there are. I see a little bunny here. Um, year after year, and I uh, can see how the sizes of the populations evolve. Here in Michigan, uh, in Isle Royal, which is an uh, island in Lake Superior, up actually near the Canadian shoreline, uh, people have been tracking how many moose there are year after year, and how many wolves there are, so uh, prey and predators. Uh, I have my own little demonstration predator here, and I couldn't find a moose, so a horse with moose antlers will have to do. Uh, so let's take a look at um, how uh, predators and prey interact and how they find each other or avoid each other. So here I've got a simulation um, with 500 prey animals, each represented by a blue dot, and three predator animals, each represented by a red plus, and each having kind of a territory that it can reasonably hunt in. And then we ask how many prey animals are within the red circles. And right now, apparently, there's nine total within those three circles. And then the question we need to ask is, as the number of predators increases, how does the number of prey animals who are inside the red circles change? As the number of prey animals increases, how does the number of uh, prey vulnerable to predators increase? So um, we can change, let, let's change the number of prey animals. If I double this 500 to 1,000, what do you think will happen to the number of blue circles that are within reach of the predators? So we'll do 1,000. And we used to have 9 here, now we have 28, which is more than tripling. But there's some randomness to this. If I generate new random numbers, you can see it's evened out. Um, well, what would you say that is on average? Maybe 35 or so? And then if I double this again to 2,000, does it make sense that this roughly doubled from about 35 to about 70, something like that? And then if I double this again to 4,000, does it make sense that this doubled again to from 70-ish to somewhere like 140. So when we doubled the number of prey animals each time, the total number of prey in that were vulnerable to predators uh, within their little circle of, of um, hunting region increased. What if I double the number of predator animals from three to six? What do you think will happen to the total number of prey um, available to be eaten? Ready? So it was like 140 something. Is it now almost 300, like 280 ish? So hopefully that makes sense. So what we're deciding here is that doubling either the predators or the prey will double the number of prey that are exposed to the predators on average. And um, the number of interactions between predators and prey is proportional to both the number of predators and the prey. And the only way to have something that's proportional to two things is to be proportional to their product. Uh, so the number of interactions uh, is proportional to number of predators times number of prey. So in other dif differential equation examples, we've seen something that's proportional to a single value. Uh, now it's proportional to two things, and the only way to do that simultaneously is to be proportional to their product. All right, let's take a look at it on paper. All right, so um, we should say which things we're ignoring when we're setting up a system. Um, so uh, it's easiest to ignore the fact that like some animals are too young to hunt or too young to have babies, and just count how many moose are there, how many wolves are there. And if we really needed to get detailed, we could go back and do a more detailed model, but let's start simple. Also, let's ignore the randomness. It's really hard to mix randomness into calculus. Uh, we can do it a little bit in Math 419, but I think you'll be uh, thankful if we just use kind of on average this kind of, kind of happens. Um, so let's say that um, m of t is the number of moose in year, year t. Um, 
and WT is the number of wolves in year T. And let's say, how does the number of moose change? Uh, that would be D, DT, M of T. That's the derivative, so that's the rate of change of the number of moose. Oh, another thing we're going to ignore is the fact that you can't have fractional moose or wolves. Uh, we're going to be saying, well, all this is approximate anyway, so if we get a non-integer number, which we usually will, we just don't worry about it. We're not going to round to integers or anything. Um, so uh, just by themselves, if there were no wolves around, we'd say, well, populations generally grow exponentially, uh, which is proportional to the number of uh, of animals that there currently are. So we'd have some constant, the growth constant, we'll say, times m of t. So this will be positive, so it might be like 3% a year or something. Um, and we can do something similar. Uh, we're going to save some space over here. Um, for the wolves, um, well, if there were no moose around, what would happen to the wolves? Not so good things, right? They wouldn't have enough energy to have the little baby wolves, and so they would actually decay if there were no moose around. Um, so we'll have some kind of decay constant times the number of wolves. So they would exponentially decay towards zero in their account. But now let's think about moose-wolf interactions. We said um, the number of interactions is proportional to the number of moose and the number of wolves, so to their product. And are moose-wolf interactions good or bad for a moose? Pretty bad, I'd say. So we'd have a negative here and some constant times the number of moose times the number of wolves. And moose-wolf interactions are good for the wolves, so we'll have a plus here and some other constant. And these constants depend on uh, things like how good wolves are at catching moose, how nutritious a moose is to the wolves to help it have little baby wolves, um, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so we're not going to worry about the biological details. We'll just use some numbers that tend to give us good answers uh, in the math territory. All right, so we've got proportional growth and proportional decay. So let's kind of highlight that. So the number of animals in its own group. And then we've got something that's proportional to the product of the two numbers of animals, or you could say it's proportional to both of them at the same time. All right, so this is a really important idea in um, differential equations that we haven't seen before. We've seen um, decay relative to how much there currently is in the intravenous fluid uh, situation, and uh, we've seen, I think we've seen uh, growth like that. Um, but this idea of proportional to two things simultaneously comes up in lots of differential equations. Let's go take a look at this in Excel. All right, we've got this set up in Excel. Uh, we've got our prey growth rate. Um, so in the absence of wolves, moose will grow at 7% per year. Uh, we've got our predator decay rate. Uh, in the absence of moose, the wolves will decay at 10% per year. We've got the interaction between the two. These are just numbers, um, and I just basically made them up to kind of fit the graph we had from the free, Detroit Free Press at the, on the very first part of this video. Um, and there, there's no formulas here. Um, so what are we going to do? So we're starting with 990 prey and 30 predators, and we have to do our differential equation here, and try to remember what it was, or look back at your notes. It was 
proportional. So this is prey. So they're going to be uh, growing proportionally. Um, so that constant times the number of prey plus this constant, which is negative. I, on my sheet I had written minus something, but it was really plus this negative number times number of prey times number of predators. And I'm being careful about uh, using dollar signs when I'm referring to the values up here, but not using dollar signs when I refer to the values down here. And then uh, number of predators, a rate of change of predators, is this 10% times the number of predators plus this coefficient times number of prey times number of predators. And then what's going to happen next year? My new value for prey is going to be my old value plus the rate of change of prey times dt. That's our calculus prediction equation. And number of predators now is number of predators last year plus rate of change of predators times dt. And again, uh, remember, this is all kind of approximate anyway, so it, it's OK if we have fractional numbers here. I'm going to, um, so dt is just taking the difference in time here. Um, we're also ignoring any fluctuations in numbers from uh, during a year, like babies are born in the springtime, and that would bump up the population. Uh, I don't know when deaths would happen to occur. But we're just saying, let, like, let's survey the population July 1st every year and kind of ignore what happens cyclically during the year. So now we can fill these down and fill these down. And we get numbers, and of course we graph them, and I've got that prepared here. So this is interesting. Here's the number of moose, and that seems to have cycles to it. Here's the number of wolves, and it's hard to see because there's so many moose it's squishing the scale. Um, but it does seem like there are cycles. One thing we can do, so we can make graphs on separate axes and then kind of try to line them up. Um, one nice thing in Excel, I can copy this graph, paste it here, and then double click on that data series and say put it on a secondary axis. So that makes its y values um, judged on the y-axis to the right here rather than to the left. So the large number of moose doesn't squish the scale and keep us from seeing the details in the wolves population. So the gray curve you read over here and the orange curve you read over here. Um, this is often something that's actually dangerous to do uh, and could give the wrong impression about cause and effect and stuff, but that's not a, not a trouble here. So we see interesting cycles where the number of moose builds up and then the number of wolves builds up because there's more prey available. And then there's so many wolves that the number of moose population declines. And then once the moose are in decline, the wolves end up uh, pretty hungry. And so their numbers decline and then the whole thing starts all over again. It's interesting, there's actually no nice formulas that describe these curves. You might think, oh, well, it's like a sine wave with a growing amplitude. And yeah, it's like that. But there's no formula that gives this exactly, um, which is OK, because this is all just kind of approximate anyway. So that's our predator-prey situation, where we're using um, proportional growth and, uh, effect, and an interaction effect proportional to both the, uh, this variable and that variable simultaneously, so proportional to their product.